we can just briefly talk about Darkest Hour. We have a whole separate episode on Darkest mm. Hour. Um, I thought it was a good movie. Yeah. I don't think that it had a snowball's chance in hell mm. of willing, winning uh, best movie. I don't really know that. I, I but mean, it's kind of the when you think about it, it's sort of the kind of movie that maybe let's say ten years back could have been a bit more of a front runner. I think maybe, maybe. But but for me, um, I looked. I looked at past Oscar winners mm. last week just to check out the, because it, it's be, it really has been for me. It's been three years of of not the best mm. film winning. So I started looking at is it actually true that which year has it been in my mind mm. that the best film has won? Um, and there weren't that many. Uh, I mean, uh, but but about I don't know how many years ago maybe seven or eight years ago or something like that they decided to have like nine or ten mm. uh, uh, nominations for the for best picture and in the beginning i thought this is going to be stupid that mm. they're going to put just filler in no. just just uh, films in which don't really matter that much or aren't that interesting and actually now looking at uh at the years since and before, I don't think that there's that much filler. I think that a lot of the movies that have been included in that mm. category, even before it, w before it was five, it was yeah. always five. And I, th I thought that of those years, it's usually two of them were filler. Yeah. Or they, they didn't have any chance of mm. winning. And now it's probably the same percentage of filler. Mm. But even... I, I think that this year, for example, out of the nine nominees, I don't think that any of those movies were bad. No. So, so um, calling Darkest Hour filler is a bit much. It is a bit much. But, but I think that, that it just didn't have a chance. No, it didn't. No, it, it's in, a, in that way, it is a filler movie. But in, in, in the way that is it really a good enough movie to warrant an... A nomination then it's not really a filler because it is that good but um, there's this actually I was just reminded of this interesting um, I was listening to this podcast it's this uh, American conservative um, I don't know if he's like a media voice or whatever the ones that you you love yeah the ones that <laughs> I always listen to during the <laughs> darkest hours of the night and uh, he was what, what was the guy's name it's it's Ben Shapiro yeah yeah and he was talking about how the how it used to be that um, the films that would win the best film category were usually huge box office hits. Yeah. But nowadays, like for the past something like ten years, it hasn't been so. And he was pointing out that now the problem is that the academy has become, if I am quoting him correctly, it has become too politicized, and they're sort of like. Um, they're giving nominations based on what the movie represents, yeah. politically speaking. Yeah. Instead of just you know looking at them as movies, and uh, I guess the broader point that he was making was that um, back in the good old days, <laughs> it was more like this. Uh, it was sort of like, like if you think about a box office movie that is also a really good movie, it would sort of imply that you know all of America went to see that movie because it was such a great movie. But nowadays there are these sort of niche movies in a way. Yeah, I, I don't completely disagree, but I think that the. I think that it works. Also backwards in terms of what he's talking about. Mm. Because I think that a lot of movies nowadays tend to be more political. Mm, the movies that are made with uh, larger budgets, with better writers, with better mm. direct or directors and so on, tend to be more political. No. And I think that one, I think that we can actually move on from this to the next movie on the list, which I don't know if you've seen the post. No, I haven't, no. Yeah. But it's basically a very, very old-fashioned movie. Mm. It's 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 a movie about. For those of you who don't know, it's about it's a movie about what happened uh, with the Ellsberg Papers, uh, 
Daniel Ellsberg was a CIA analyst who was sent to Vietnam to write um, write sort of uh, his academic uh, opinion and other people's academic academic opinions as well on how the Vietnam conflict was progressing, mm. and and he basically became the same. He did the same that that. Um, he he, be, he leaked. He mm. leaked the whole dossier. He yeah. he was working for a, a, a semi-governmental organization called the RAND, uh, which was basically built, uh, filled with academics writing on different uh, classified issues, mm. and and he copied the whole thing, uh, smuggled it out with his hippie friends, mm. and and then they published parts of it through different newspapers. And this is what happened with the Washington Post, which the title of obviously refers to, who had a, a, a really hardline, old-fashioned journalist at, at the helm of it, Ben Bradley, who was, who was played by uh, Tom Hanks, and then had as its owner uh, uh, a woman who had... Uh, Kay Graham, who had uh, inherited the paper and wasn't going to be a publisher but because his because her husband died mm. and it w had been her father's before that k graham sort of was forced into being this huge head of a huge newspaper no. that was going down the toilet mm. and they had and the new york new york times um, got the ellsberg story mm. first but then they got an injunction from the government to to say that they can't publish this material because it's too um, it's too sensitive and it's mm. going to cause uh, uh, security issues and so on and so mm. on and so on. And so the Washington Post got the papers from Ellsberg because they had one of the journalists who was who had worked with Ellsberg before. And, and they published them under mm. em enormous po political pressure and, mm. and injunction orders from the government that they're going to be sent to jail and so on and so on yeah. and so on. So it's a very basic American story about, yeah. uh, about the rights of journalism and, and the role of journalism. Mm. In the, and, and it's so obviously done now. It, it was filmed in like six months. Mm. And it's, it, it started filming last May. Mm. And it was made, uh, made to order. <laughs> made, I mean, it yeah. was released early enough to be con considered a, yeah. a, an academy, uh, academy Awards contender. And it's got two old school, Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks, yeah. sort of the biggest box office mm. serious kind of people. It's got Spielberg directing. Mm. And if you think about Spielberg's films like 30 years ago, there were political films, mm. but before like Schindler's List, mm. those the, the kinds of movies that he was making that could have been Oscar contenders wouldn't have been that political. No. But nowadays, these kinds of people who are really good at what they do and, mm. and they're, they're sort of interested in material that is political. Mm. And that's one of the reasons because they're so skilled at what they do, that's one of the reasons mm. why the Academy picks them out. Yeah. So I think that with Shapiro, it's true that it's more political nowadays. Mm. And I think that the Academy has also become more politicized. But I also think that Hollywood movies have become more politicized. That is true. So, so that's one of the reasons. And, and this, like this was such a throwback to the mm. 70s. And that's the previous time mm. that a yeah. lot of these films yeah. have been really politicized. Yeah. And then there was this 80s lag and, and 90s depression and so on. And, mm. and now it's sort of come back into vogue, I think. So, so it's, I think that it, it, it is true, but it's less to do with, with, with the academy and more to do with the material that's being filmed nowadays. Yeah, so it's basically, in a way, it's, it is something that Hollywood is doing on its own. Yeah, I mean, and, it's and not only Hollywood, yeah. because like we talked about d the darkest, darkest hour, it's also yeah. like Brexit yeah, true, and true. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but also, The Post was, I thought, a really well-made film, but ultimately way too old-fashioned. Mm. Uh, it was 
it was the kind of movie that is so clearly made to get Hanks or Streep or Spielberg a mm. nomination no. that they're not going to win. I mean, I don't think that Meryl, it was Meryl Streep's like, I don't know how many nominations she's got, like 20 or something, something like, like that. Something like that, yeah. And it was completely, it, it was it was impossible that she would have won mm. for that role because it, it wasn't that spectacular in no. any way. And I thought it was just solid. It was mm. just solid American filmmaking no. in every way. Old fashioned, well made, uh, like you got Spielberg at the helm, John Williams makes the music, no, Tom good. Hanks and Meryl Streep are starring. And it, 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 it makes a, a, a significant, relevant political mm. uh, point but other than that, mostly forgettable. Do you think it would be possible to tailor, like create, like let's say seven years in a row, seven roles for Meryl Streep that are so tough to pull off acting roles that she would, that there would be a small or a probability that she would win seven years in a row. Just give her like, just start by, if you like, Let's say you were creating a movie, you start by the f lead female role and you make it so difficult to perf for the performer that it's sort of like automatically kind of push you into the top five and probably to the top one or two roles. I think that that's an interesting question. I don't, I think that it would be possible to have her as a nominee mm. for seven years in a yeah. row. But I don't think it's in any way possible that she would win. Because Meryl Streep is now such an icon. Yeah. And with that iconic structure, and this is again referring to the whole Academy mm. Awards themselves, it's not interesting no, if something not. happens mm. seven years in a row. That's true. So the people that are there, they're going to go by the third year at the latest, they're mm. going to go, we can't give it to Streep anymore. But what do you switch up the roles? Like the, in the first year, it's something like a crippled woman living <laughs> in the streets with her darling boy, who is an, uh, somewhat um, this is box <laughs> <laughs> mentally challenged. <laughs> and then on the second year, that's some, some, some person who has actually lived or you know, existed, then it's like a like doing Margaret Thatcher or something like yeah. that. And then on the third year, it could be like, uh, then you have to go a little bit indie maybe, like this get out style of thing. Yeah. That you create. Yeah, it could be, it would be fun. It, if I had unlimited funds, that is what I would do with them. I would just strip it out. Yeah, yeah, that's much better than curing cancer. <laughs> 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 obviously, obviously it is. Yeah. yeah. We can briefly also talk about Dunkirk. Yeah. Uh, which I, I have mentioned on the show way too many times already. But I thought, for me, there were like two contenders for the best mm. movie this year. And Dunkirk, again, was one of them. I, 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 I don't want to spend too much time on, it, on this, but again, like we've been saying before, I think it was a movie that did something new. Mm. It did something yeah. that, that, that films don't tend to do. And I think in that regard, also it being very well made, uh, I would have hoped that it would have won. Because I think that, that in the years to come, when I look back mm. on these Oscars, I think that Dunkirk will be one of those movies that will stand the test of time. I think so too. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, if you think about La La Land as a movie that sort of reinvented musicals, then Dunkirk sort of reinvented the war movie. Yeah. Um, no. But you're right, we have been talking about it for quite a while. Yeah. But it's really